Classic 2022. I'm obviously here in the Cobra. We've got GT6 Ollie in the GT6, which is also sticking up, and Ollie's got some prime friends next to us as well. In this port, there were so many cars that are heading to Le Mans. We've got this Daimler that's just pulled in, a Daimler Sovereign. I think we need to get in the car to show our passports and then get on the six hour ferry into Le Mans. Oh dear. Right. What a sight this morning. We've got Ollie and David, who I'm with as well. They've already gone on the ferry and I'm just waiting to get boarded up. But further down my line, behind the Alpha, we've got a Murcielago. He revved it when he arrived. It sounded amazing. Almost like an Aventador. We've got all sorts of MX-5s, MGBs, Triumph TR6s and Morgans. There's a GT40 somewhere. But whilst it is annoying that Ollie and David are already on the ferry, at least I can have a look at the cars in the queue. There's a little TVR lineup. Oh, that's more like it. All of these cars heading down to Le Mans. Oh look, another Cobra, blue with white stripes, roundels and stickers just like mine. Oh, we've got another Mercy Lager that's arrived. This one may well be a genuine LP640. This one a Roadster. Further around, there is an Aston Martin DB7 Zagato. And further on, towards the end of the lineup, we have two Shelby Daytona Coupes. Two of them in a row. for the next six hours until we get to France. It's gonna be a long ferry trip, but it's only a short drive once we get to France to Le Mans. We're looking for a cafe. Ooh, cars. I thought there was no animals on board. Oh, look, cars. Ah, it's blue, like, like the ocean, which we are in. It is windy. Father Queen. Greeting into France, a big cloud of rain just as we arrived and now it's gone. So we've got wet trousers now, the GT40s are all lined up with each other waiting for their mates and we're waiting for our mates who aren't too far behind. He's gone fishing for likes. Oh. I'll get ready for this side, we've got the other Shelby Daytona Coupe rolling past the GT40s. That's the scene we like. 
<laughs> Sounds incredible. Oh, how joyous. There's another rain cloud coming. <laughs> oh, no. Only others to hurry up so we can get moving before it rains. He's got a roof. I've got a roof. I just don't want to put it up. Oh, there's a Triumph GT6. I think Ollie's behind that TVRT350. There he is, just behind the Hillman Imp. Yeah, here he is. Oh, TVR Wedge. It's a Sierra 420. Love it. Oh, it's still very wet. It's no signs of stopping, so we're just going to get moving. We should have looked at the forecast, so I should have put the roof up, but it's under all our luggage, so they're going to lead the way because they have roofs and cigarette lighters. So after a drive longer than intended, I still need the toilet. We have arrived at our three pitches. We're just trying to work out how best to display the cars. We are going to turn... Oh, well, he's already turned us round. When did you do that? Oh, Chloe's struggling. Chloe wants to put the tent up, erect it immediately. Yeah. It's not always that simple. I'll just check things out. <laughs> I have a job. It's going up. Oh. How long's that been there for? <laughs> it's just staring at me in the... It's throw it over the fence. How is it going? It's doing okay. This is a new tent, new to all of us. It's green to match your nails. Oh yeah, show everyone your nails, your Le Mans classic nails. How amazing are those? And this is my equivalent of nails. Oh, I've got my, my golf bag and my golf top and my golf socks. No, no, it's hail. Oh my God. Ah, that was sudden. But, look at the sunset, it's too good, sorry, yeah. No, 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 get in, the, get in the tent, get in the tent, get in the tent. My back's wet, we get the beverage. Shoes off. Move like it's World shoes, War Three. Shoes off. Oh. oh, that was sudden. Right, we have a new arrival on the other side of the gate, but it's worthwhile. Apparently he comes here every year, or most years. This is his camping vehicle that he's brought along, and he's pulling a trailer, and inside the trailer is a Ford GC40. But to conclude day one, we've, we've got some drinks. Everyone's just having a good time, so I'll catch up with you tomorrow for some racing, maybe, qualifying, and some car sporting, and we shall see. The Earth says hello. <laughs> So day two, we're going to do a bit of exploring. David's gone to go to watch the racing. Ollie wants to go to Decathlon, so we're going to drive to Decathlon. Because the racing's on, they've closed a lot of the roads, so even though it's one and a half miles away, it's going to take 20 minutes to get there. And uh, then do a bit of exploring of cars and general stuff. The racing, the main racing starts tomorrow, but we'll do that when we do that. Decathlon and we heard these E-types blasting past. We just realized we're right next to the Mulzan Strait. There you go, there's uh, another E-type. E-types. <laughs> so this is the Mulzan Strait, which is normally a public road. That's why we're so close. Oh. E-types 
types, C types and D types. But they fenced it off here so you can't spectate unless you pay monies. Right, let's buy some decathlon stuff. I got a flag and it kind of worked. It's, it's very bendy, that's not going to last. Go to the concert Yeah. <laughs> Almost whacked Ollie there. <laughs> so after a morning of shopping, we're now in the car park with some brave wheels on this ditch and there is a Porsche parking zone and we're going into the circuit for our first look as to what is here. There's the Porsche Benz there with the Porsche parking and the Porsche building. Oh look, it's the Porsche F12 Berlinetta. But I'm taking a detour. We saw this car yesterday. Here it is, Dodge Viper GTS in grey with no stripes. Those wheels are the wheels I want. This is the car I want. This has got brown interior. I've got a brown bottle. This is actually really nice. It's a French cider. They've got their hats in the back. Central exit rear pipes. That's the dream. Merch. Merch. Bar. Bar. Oh, here's the start finish line. Quite an ice cream. I mean, and that someone is an ass. I want an ice cream. <laughs> He's got an ice cream. is pure. Beautiful Jaguar D-Type, he looks massive in that. Ah, oh, this is the kind of Le Mans car I've come here to see. We want to watch this class later, that's for sure. GC40 again, there's so many here. This is what 9 euros buys you, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what 11 euros buys you. <laughs> oh my god, some lobsters. I've got an ice cream. You've got an ice cream. We all scream for it. Ollie hasn't got an ice cream. Oh, oh that's good. Oh. Mine's better. Uh, Yellow Z, it's a plane. No. Hey. Love it. Hey. Four blokes got hiccups. <laughs> She's got dogs in her hands. Is that a dog? Is it real? Is it? Oh, it's not. Oh, it's a cobra. It's a bee. Oh, it's a wasp. Cobra. Not, not a genuine one. Like mine. Hiccups. Hic oh, now this is this is what I'm gonna get a Le Mans car. I've got to get the Picasso. I thought I just heard someone do a really loud but unsubtle fart. It wasn't a fart at all. It was a chap sitting on a car, a Cadillac, no less, with its bands. <laughs> And let me fill you in about the alcohol at this event, well, the drinks. So, you have to buy a two euro cup, you can get the deposit back or keep the cup. And each colour, I think, has a couple of designs. This one's got some kind of alpha on it. And there's an orange one that's got a Mazda 787B. And we found some British people with those cups, they had cider in them and we've asked where they got them from. So that's where we're heading to. So they directed us to this crepery. Oh, the cups! Oh, the cups! Oh, hello! <laughs> They're looking for drinks! <laughs> they are the cups that we want. Merci! Oh my god! Oh, I'm happy now. I have another souvenir cup. Now we need to find the yellow one that's got the Harrods McLaren F1 GTR. That's next. It's good soup too. Good soup. It's always hard to see how small she really is. Oh, <laughs> oh where have all the lobsters gone? <laughs> Here is a paddock and a GT40 being pulled. I want a 787B race outfit. So we have a special pass that lets us look at some special cars, including CSX 2127 289 Shelby Cobra. Cobra's got some drift lock going on there. Here it is, proper Ford V8 289 Cobra. Listen to that, that's louder than mine. Aha, we have a Shelby Daytona Coupe. This will probably be a recreation. They only made six of these and normally they're not seen racing. And we have two more Shelby Daytona Coupes. Agonies for Revolutions. It's the Biscuit Those two are massive. But after a little bit of spotting inside the show, we're now back into the car park in the field to have some dinner. And we found this Cobra. Also, Goodyear, Eagle, tie writing. Oh, R32 GTR. Oh, oh, he revved as well. 
Viper GTS, blue and white stripes, it's got a spoiler as well, and yellow, yellow tire rising? It had, it had tire rising. And somehow we didn't notice, just in front of the entrance of our campsite, we've got a TVR Tuscan and what looks to be a T400 race car with many green bottles on its spoiler. I don't think I've ever seen one of those, especially a road legal one. That's one so far for the car of the day. And look, we're inside it. It's a T400R. It was a race car. It's been converted for road use and was driven here. We've got carbon fiber on the dash. And here it is at the back with its beer on display. That is phenomenal. Right opposite our campsite too. Now this gentleman and lady is not wine. This is a cider. And I've got a corkscrew, even though I don't drink wine. Even though you don't need one. I was going to say that. What? It's a champagne cork. Oh, it is a champagne cork. <laughs> oh, look at this. This was in my pocket. I was so proud. Does that mean I shake it? No. <laughs> let it pop, let it pop. No, no, it hit. It. There are lots of cars here for it to hit. Well, just make sure it goes straight up and it'll hit yours. Don't shake it. Pop. Pop. Hey, up. Hey! hey the Good shot, sir. It's not a fancy cork. Oh, I'm sorry. Caught it too. So I'm consuming this beverage. <laughs> it's actually really nice. I still want to have a quick walk around the campsite and see what else I can find that's currently parked up. So Le Mans never fading to disappoint. There's a blue and white Cobra with a cream soft top and an American corner over here with the Camaro on the end. And after the Trans Am and the Camaro, we have a C3 and a C6 Corvette. And then on the other side of the fence, we've got a GT40 arriving just over there, which is the one that was in the trailer yesterday. And then this weird kit car. I'm not sure what it is. It's not got much of a windscreen. And Vauxhall Astra rear lights. So at least I think that's what they are. That's what they look like, like an earlier Astra. Um, this is something I haven't seen before, which is rare to say. That's the brilliance of coming here, because I get to see cars from other countries. This one's from France that I'll never have seen. And here, we have a Koki Nissan S14 Silvia. But it's called the Hommel Barquette, which is similar to Baguette, which is funny because it's French. What? Ah, now looky here, a lime green Lotus Exige Series 2 S. This is the colour to get for one of those, Kermit approves. And these Dutch legends have brought along a Ferrari Testarossa. Oh, here we go, an R32 and an R35 GTR. That's the one we saw earlier today. This marvellous 911 rolls past, as well as the baguette. And this 997 Turbo has been given its own tent. So we're now back at the campsite and Oliver is asleep. So Naomi's got a speaker and we're going to play some baby noises for Ollie. Just to prepare him for when Naomi gets pregnant. How are we doing on the baby noise? <laughs> oh, you got! You should have seen it. He was, he was genuinely concerned. Like, what? But after an evening of antics with the cars, we're going to go into the circuit to watch more nighttime qualifying. But I'm not going to bring you with us because I'd like to pack light for that. But tomorrow we're going to try and stay as late, maybe do a 24-hour all-nighter to watch the racing, so tomorrow's video will have some nighttime flybys and heated breaks and flames. So I look forward to that. I'll see you tomorrow bright and early. So welcome to day two, no, three, and the Scooter Club. They're all scooting to the entrance to watch the racing, which has already begun. But it's not just racing, we want to look around some of the individual display sections within the show and just enjoy the day and the sunshine and the white trousers. There is a dress code or a dress code that they try and enforce, but they don't enforce at all. They tell you to try and dress in a period correct attire, but everyone's in shorts and a t-shirt other than me. So it's a little bit busier today. There's bikes and cars driving around everywhere and, and people people everywhere, 
and ice creams. But have you ever washed your car and smelt it and thought, hmm, I really want to try that? Well, now you can. Hybrid ceramic drink. But being France, we are currently celebrating Renault and Alpine. We have Alpines and Renaults as far as the eye can see. Oh, this one does have eyes. Cheeky yeah. Renault 5. Le car van. Oh, it is a van, look. Renault 5 van. I have never seen so many Renault Alpines in my life. But when in France? And on the infield, in the middle of the Porsche Benz, we have a Porsche club parking up their Porsches. There are hundreds of 964s over there. And the trouble is, when there's so much to look at, it's hard to stop and look at things because you don't know what to look at. But this has caught our eye on the back of the Alfa Romeo truck. In fact, the truck is pretty fantastic itself. Um, it looks like an Alfa. You can tell because of the rust. Advert, good condition. Yeah, yeah. One careful owner. Oh, well, looky here. Renault Spider in a rare colour. Just pure silver. And within this crowded Lamborghini section, we have this Lamborghini Dino. So Lamborghini's son, Mr. Lamborghini Dino, was what this car was named after. You can tell it's a Lambo because it's yellow and it's in the lineup of Lambos. Oh, Mura. Oh, yes, I am joking. It's not a Lamborghini. Why did you say that, though? Because <laughs> it's in the lineup of Lambos. This is proper. Oh, wow. Check out the Diablo. It's got blue tinted headlights. It's got a, a rear end that I've never seen before. Is it a GTR or is it a converted to GTR for the road? Diablo Evolution with four pipes in the middle in a satin blue. That's incredible. Now, I don't know yet if it is a genuine LP670 SV, but it looks pretty legit. Finished in a beautiful blue. Ah, oh, here we go. Confirmation. It is number 335 of 350 Murcielago SVs. And we have a Countach arriving in style with three people on board. And behind me, another Countach next to the beautiful SV. This one with very vibrant orange interior matching the orange on the Huracan next door. We have an Aventador with a DMC body kit next to a Murcielago also sharing orange interior with the white and missing a grille on the front as well. And behind, we have the Citroen SM, which has been converted into a flatbed or a curved bed. It's got 10 wheels. That is a certified long boy. It's got rear interior still, so most of the car is still there. It's been cut off here, sliced, given a little spoiler. I'd love to see another Citroen SM on the back of the SM. And opposite that, we have a small Italian section with a Ferrari P4 replica. That's cool. Right? That is very cool. Very clean as well. Oh, Cobras. There's a Cobra Club and a Ford GT section as well. Take a look at that. Three Ford GTs. We've got the dark blue with the white stripes, dark blue with silver stripes, and orange with dark stripes. Oh, there's more. Oh, that's the Mirage. The Mirage 720. I haven't seen this car in years. It used to be on the scene. I think the owner who had this has a Veyron now instead. That's why we don't see it anymore. It's the worst I've ever seen in my life. Oh, the Bentley. Yeah. It's got brave wheels. They call it this Continental. 24, that's what it's been self-titled as, to excuse us from the brave wheels and the brave bonnet and the pig. That's right, we're just by the Cobras. We've got red with black, red without stripes. I do love red with no stripes on a Cobra. Number eight, he could do with another eight next to that eight. And another Shelby Daytona Coupe. More four GCs. I've never seen so many. There's like five in a row, then two of the new ones. Then we have a Heritage Edition next to a new Heritage Edition. Heritage Edition. These Porsches appear to be lining up to park up. His hat fell off. Ah, there's a Bugatti Chiron. Thou shalt always follow the crowd because where there is a crowd, there is quality content. The French blue Bugatti Chiron and a Hurricane STO, baby blue with some red details next door. Today we are seeing cars I've only ever seen in a car book from a kid, like the Clarkson books. Venturi, a very rare French car. But there is a race about to start, a race that we really want to see. We've missed the 787B to a parade lap, so we're going to have to rush through the TVR section with the Tamora, the Tuscan and the Griffith. Though they are British cars, TVRs are the cars you always get to see at Le Mans. It's a, a classic Le Mans road trip vehicle. I took my wedge to Le Mans on my way up from Monaco. Another Cigaris, there's a wedge and a lovely wide body livery Datsun. Oh, there's a Cobra Club, which includes a Shelby Daytona Coupe. Obviously, all of these are replicas. This one with wide arches. Chloe is rushing because she wants to see the race. They're about to go past us on their second lap. Oh, Chloe has found a car like mine. It looks like a Dax. Yeah, that's a Dax. This Datsun 260Z has a dragon on it and fake side pipes. 
The exhausts don't exhaust. And further up, we have a wide-bodied Ferrari 458. And a JZR three-wheeler with a tartan bonnet. Oh no, tartan on the top of the car. It looks like a pair of spectacles upside down on it. And look what we've got. We have the Harrods McLaren F1 GTR Cup. It came with a beer, so that's a bonus. Oh, there they are. This is the good news. Oh, the Peugeot. This is the class that I like. This is a cool bus. Have got a flying ant? <laughs> there is a flying ant in your hair, yes. Can you get him out, please? Boing. Oh, he's there now. Oh, can you can tell him to f*** off, please? And whilst Chloe is queuing for some expensive lunch, we're going for a seafood platter. A car that almost inspired a livery on my 350Z has just arrived on a flatbed, so I considered doing this kind of livery on my 350. Oh, it's going up. It's being unloaded onto the plat. But I went yellow in the end. But how cool is this? One of the very few Nissan Le Mans cars. This particular one is the Nissan R90. The R390 is another well-known Nissan car with a different livery. Check that out inside. <laughs> Bit of an awkward place to get into. But we're now waiting for the Endurance Legends to go on track. And we've got some oysters to try. Oh, well done. Oh yes, Le Mans, because we're <laughs> Le Mans on Appetit. I haven't had an oyster since I was a kid, and I hated it then. I'm going to hate it now. That was much nicer than I remember it being. Now here's a French tradition. Snails. Do, do I butter it? Or... I'd butter it. I'd butter it. There's a snail in my mouth. It's good. But after that experience, the endurance legends are just warming up their tyres, getting ready to start the race. So we're going to go find a place just behind the R90, which is now on display. He's being called off by the fan. <laughs> this is a great paddock. Look at all these 70s and 80s Le Mans cars. We've got the front and the rear end of this Cheetah, which looks tiny without them. We've got the 512 BBLM next door to them. In fact, there's a few of them. And then this beefy Aston. It's basically a muscle car amongst the rest of them. But the plan for us now, now that we've found some more Cobras, a Shelby Daytona Coupe, and some more GT40s, and an MGB, is to watch some racing into the night. So, let's do that. Oh, what's this? Three into the cells. We've now seen every group through 
their evening stint. There's going to be racing throughout the whole night. It's 24 hours of racing, just different groups. But we're going to go back because breakfast is at 9, so we want maybe four hours of sleep before then. So I'll see you tomorrow. So the final day of racing. Here we are after just four hours of sleep and we're heading back in for another day of looking around, basically capturing what we've missed. So we're going to look for the endurance paddock and whilst we're doing that, we've got all sorts of cars driving around. Boston Healy, they may have won. He's a VIPB. Hello VIPBs. Do you think I can hitch a ride? <laughs> Public transport's taking a turn. Oh, it's the beast. It's a Cadillac. So I feel like I've just unlocked a whole new section of a map on a video game because it's like a brand new show. We didn't see any of this. There's a Ford Thunderbird over there. I don't know what this section is, but I'm liking it. And here at Le Mans, there are Volkswagen camper vans everywhere, whether they be split screens or not. And this one is pulling itself behind as a trailer that has been converted just the front and the rear of a camper as a trailer on the identical specs camper with a barbecue on the back. What's this guy selling? <laughs> and whilst earlier in our campsite we found the road legalised TVR T400R, we have two more here. And I think only about three or four exist. There we go, we've got the DeWalt liveried one, which is very famous, and then this one which I saw racing yesterday with white wheels. He's white wheeling the world. And further down in the endurance paddock we have the 996 E36 and then a collection of Dodge Viper GTSRs. We've got the PlayStation 2 liveried one and then Fina, which is probably my favourite, and then another blue example next door. And the rest of the paddock is a little bit bare, but in the corner we've got this Aston Martin D. VR9, the Vitaphone livery, and two more legendary Le Mans cars. We've got the Bentley Speed 8s, number 69, and then the number 7 car being protected by this heavy duty line. Further up, a Maserati MC12 in the Red Bull livery, and another one sharing the Vitaphone livery with the DBR9 at the back. Further down, a Celine S7R. <laughs> oh, then the panels, the Esperante GTR1, and probably the most special, or one of the most special cars in this paddock, the Lamborghini Diablo Jota GT1 LM, as brought along by Oakfields. They let me know this was going to be here, and I've been looking out for this, purely because it's got white wheels, as it should. And whilst a lot of vehicles have left, we've still got the main ones, the XJR12s, the XJR9s, many silk cut Jags. Oh, there are so many liveries, I love the Kenwood one. There's the Financial Times pink example down the end. Oh, next up is the NK C84. What a beast. And the closest thing to my 350Z is this yellow Nissan Le Mans car. Oh, and look, new day, new cup. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, no, there's a traffic jam. <laughs> if you would let me spend my whole life loving you. It's not raining. Oh, wow. Oh, my God, that was a surprise. Ferrari Daytona SP3. Two of them. What? When did this happen? Oh my god. <laughs> I think I've only ever seen two, now there's two more here. I gotta get a picture for Instagram too. These have the same V12 as the LaFerrari, but without the hybrid system, as I'm about to get run over by this tiny thing. But this is what it's all about, a proper Le Mans start at Le Mans. The drivers are lining up at the side of the road to run to their cars to get in and begin a next race. Oh, run! Run! <laughs> no one's started yet. We've found a pretty hidden section with a bunch of Venturis. This one a 260 LM in French blue and further down. Take a look at the spoiler on the back of that. Yeah, cars are still making a lot of sounds. There's a few over there we need to look at. That is great. 400 GT, red example there. And then this Golf liveried Venturi 
looks incredible. And further down, we have a Porsche 917K, which I believe to be a replica. And all weekend, I've been looking for the Tomaso section. I knew there was one. It's the new P72. Look at that color. Oh, that's unbelievable. Listen to that as well. So suddenly we found it and I ran. We've got a 917K as well behind it. That is beautiful. And there are two more. These are the most beautiful cars. This one finished in white with the French flag and then a pistachio green example, the number 72. They are stunning with the carbon seats as well. Fantastic to see Di Tommaso make a comeback. Yes, we know they share it with other cars, but this is just stunning car design. This dog has enjoyed his weekend at Le Mans. He's getting a pitch in front of the F1 GTR. I have as well. But for us, at least, that is it for this year for the South Circuit, because we have now left. But we have another night, unlike the other people who have actually turned their engines off waiting to get out. So fortunately, we don't have to join that traffic. We're going back to the car, have some beverages, and just relax and maybe sleep. It's actually all of these cars, no one's got their engines on. Oh, someone's just turned their engine on, sound like a 911, probably the GT3. Uh, There's only ice left in our ice bucket. <laughs> and here we are, we've collected all the colours. I've got the dark blue BMW M1 Pro car, we've got the red Alpha, we've got the 787B in orange, a Data Marzo in blue, the F1 GTR in yellow, and then the Bentley in green. Chloe, is that a Lotus Excel next to a Porsche 944? What? In the, in the campsite. Oh, can we go have a look? <laughs> As a result of that, we're going to look around the campsite, but it's amazing how much it has cleared out, because everyone's getting back for work on the Monday, but we've taken Monday off. Well, they've taken Monday off so that we can get back in our leisure. Can I just also mention, same tent as well. Oh, is that the same tent as us? <laughs> oh, it's the cars you want and the tent that you wanted. Chloe drove an hour to buy that tent on the night before we left just to get that one tent and here is the excel looking beautiful in the sun we found a new game to all <laughs> oh, he's too drunk I'm to join to in go on chloe show how it's done so surf and turf just, no, just, just beer surf. And surf and turf just surf beer in hand love. beer in hand no problem wait, 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 yeah, wait. She's with the glasses on she is spyro though she's so that's off. that works in her favor oh there's a gt40 over there on the back of a trailer and a Quattro and a 355, and a yellow van with an extension part for camping in. There's a topless man and someone's whacking someone with a camp bed. <laughs> or blow up mattress. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, they're, they're revving the 355. They're completely, they're hitting someone with a baguette. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Yes. They're very excited by the only strong. Oh. oh. Oh my days! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Is he gonna get waxed by the Ferrari flag? Or may maybe they're with him? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> What, what's French? No, he's English. <laughs> well done! Oh, oh. Very good, very nice! <laughs> why, why would they hit each other with baguettes? That's the question. Well, we've got this beautiful alpha after that, which won't be doing donuts. You can hear the crickets as well. Oh, it's a beautiful photo. It is a nice well. photo by the tree. Good. Holly's giving Polaroids to owners of cars. We got a nice snap of the Alpha. There's a golf doing handbrake turns and shooting flames. Here he goes. Here he goes. Well, there's the flames and no more handbrake. Or maybe it was a failed handbrake. Oh, there it is. Yes. But after that little walk around, uh, that was pretty much that for the uh, Sunday. So tomorrow is the drive home. So I'll catch up with that for the more depressing day. But we may see some interesting stuff on the route back. Oh, so the final day, pack up day. Cars are actually leaving already. There's an Alpine A110 who is trying to regain one of his cylinders. The folding of a tent involves thought and precision, both of which I hate. But I am good at it. Mastering the art of cobra filling, uh, as the boot doesn't stay open, is another skill of mine too. Chloe, not in public. There's toilet blocks over there. <laughs> Look at that empty campsite. An un
unlike music festivals, we're tidy. What he's doing is dirty skits. <laughs> Shall I just go to the side of the... Yeah, we can sort it out. Is that tears? Thank you. Uh, I've got no power. Do you want to stay here? Uh, we... Yeah? Yeah, thank you. Merci. No What's happened? The battery? Um, I think... Um, too many volts. <laughs> ah, exhaust. Nothing to see here. Obviously, obviously there's no power, so there's no hazard. So, flash, flash. Yeah. <laughs> go, guys. Go, go, go. <laughs> Three old power. <laughs> Three man power. Two and a half. Right, oh, God. oh God! Where are we going? I'll look out for it. So um, basically what happened is the voltage was reading too high and then the car was spluttering and trying to die and then it did die and I've got no power. So it's... I'll go into the shade actually. So we've checked the fuse box. One of the fuses was blown. Trouble is I don't know what fuses are what. So we've changed the fuse and then we thought we'd check my battery isolator which was in the boot. And you saw me stuffing stuff in um, it, it, it had isolated the battery basically, um, so the isolator was off, so the battery wasn't on. So hopefully, hopefully that's all it was, that the luggage had isolated the battery so the car was trying to run off just the alternator. Not it, full throttle. But I can smell fuel. Yeah, full throttle. Is that smoke? The thing is, that's what it sounded like when it cut out, it was like a cut out due to no fuel. Can we swap? You want to swap? Can we swap? <laughs> That's a factory five racing on that yeah, one. As well, I think. But we've tried as much as we can roadside and still no good. I think the alternator might have fried the coil because it's been overworking because there was no battery supply. Um, and my breakdown cover, which I thought was platinum, is actually gold and doesn't include European coverage. <laughs> So uh, we're broken down on the Mall Zone straight at Le Mans without any breakdown cover. So, yep. So we've pushed the car to the side of the Mall Zone straight. This is literally Tet Rouge as they come onto the Mall Zone straight and then blast down 200 miles an hour. Um, we haven't found any options at all. Garages are closed for lunch, and I can't speak enough French to understand. Uh, so we're going to have some lunch there and see what, see what we can do. But after a stay in the restaurant, we've decided to push the car into their car park and then Tom, whose tag is here, who delivers my cars to my car show, is gonna come from the UK, get the midnight train over and then recover us tomorrow morning. So we're gonna get a hotel. I'll explain later. Basically, we need to push the car to their car park, which involves going underneath and this kind gentleman has offered to help. Well, slight change of plan. A friendly local who has stopped and waited for us behind Chloe is going to help us push the car, then we can stay in the hotel and then go home tomorrow, maybe, hopefully. So we have a hotel booked. <laughs> and I'm being towed. Okay, so Chloe's stopping the road and I'm being pulled onto the road. Thank you. This stupid British We've got a very heavy lorry behind us now. This isn't embarrassing, this is British motoring. We do it all the time. Chloe's going to have to walk to the hotel, like navigating around about. We're going about 10 miles per hour. To the point of transport, 
going to pick us up tomorrow morning. He's getting the overnight crossing. We tried multiple French garages in the area. They said they won't be able to fix it until maybe tomorrow or later. They could maybe put it to their garage and Chloe's got an opening she needs to be back for tomorrow evening. It's just, that was stressful. But we're at a hotel now and we have transportation coming tomorrow morning. <laughs> so, to the point transportation. We'll be here soon, bit annoying. Might be my fault for accidentally overfilling the boots, but we don't know. We don't dwell on those things, but it's safe and sound, locked up, secure. And we're just going to chill out tonight, so I'll see you tomorrow. So, To The Points Transport has come all the way from England to pick up my car, which is on the trailer behind. They took my car to Adam Seafest and now they're taking them home from Le Mans. So I thought I had European breakdown cover because I thought I had the platinum cover. I only had gold cover. Wilson's still dancing in the background. He's from Adam Seafest as well. So I didn't have Euro breakdown cover and that's my bad. Um, so what happened, I think, just to kind of go over it is the fully loaded boot over time during the drive knocked the isolator so the battery isolated itself and then as a result the alternator was working over time I'd noticed it was providing more than 15 volts in the red and that's we think maybe fried the coil because we've got no spark um, but there's fuel and we've tried to do many things to determine what it is but we've got no what are those things called? Multimeter. Multimeter. We've got no multimeter, so we couldn't really test it. And the language barrier, calling up French garages that weren't like automated responses, it was difficult to work out what I meant. I found out the word for a coil, but even still they said I'd have to drop it off at the garage or they collect it at great expense for it to then stay there for a few days. And Chloe's got a work thing tonight. <sighs> So Tom has saved us, saved us, come all the way from the UK. So it has more than doubled the cost of my trip as a result of my failing to realize I didn't have European breakdown cover, but the Cobra is now safe and sound on its return home. And hopefully all it needs is a new coil. And it may even be as a result of me just overloading the boot. So that's, that's my Le Mans. So we're just gonna nurse it home. We were, um, what, two hours, just like under two hours away from the crossing. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to go onto the ferry that we took here, and I received a video of the cars on that ferry, and it's just classic after classic after classic, but I'm gonna have to end this video now, because we have a payage coming up, and this is my duty to pay out the payage, although this might just be a ticket, but uh, let's just, let's get back and, and relax. returns to Britain and Chloe has gone to Narnia, I'm going to finally conclude this very long video from Le Mans Classic. So anything I've posted from this event is on Instagram as well, all the pictures I took and information and we've actually made it back. The Cobra is behind me, we're on home turf, we're not too far away, made it, just it became a little bit more expensive than intended due to my lack of knowing what kind of coverage I had, but that was on my head. So. Le Mans Classic was great this year. Hopefully I'll be back next year for the 24 hour. We shall see. So make sure you ring that bell when you subscribe to be notified of what I'm up to next. So I hope you enjoy that video. But for now, thanks for watching. <laughs>